This is Marketplace. Donald Trump is now the president of the United States. So we're testing the Trump effect. Can I ask why you believe in those slogans? Do you not think that's racist rhetoric? Selling hate. White power, are you kidding me? Who buys in? If you want to come here and support Canada, support Canada. Live our way. Close the border completely. Don't let anyone in. Who steps in? This is absolutely outrageous. And who's fighting back? That kind of language is no longer tolerated. Standing up to racism, a special edition of Marketplace. How are you? Good. How are you? Meet Mike. He's an actor about to play the most uncomfortable role of his career. Can you give me an example of what you're going to be saying today? Sure. Let me get into character. So I'll say, make Canada great again. Worldwide, white power, things like that. Strong words, words that I'd never expect to come out of my mouth, but it is a role. Let's do this. Let's do it. We're testing how people will react to this. Head dollar shirts, white pride worldwide. It's white power. It's time to make Canada great again. Buy your t-shirts today. We want to know if the Trump effect has come to Canada. We want to have the wall. A great border wall. They're bringing drugs. They're rapists. A total and complete shutdown of Muslims entering the United States. We don't want them in our country. To show me some research? Absolutely, let's go. Media right. analyst James Rubick keeps track of the Trump effect. When we compare November of 2015 to November of 2016, we've seen an increase of 600% in the amount of intolerant language that Canadians are using online, on places like Twitter, in comment sections, or on web forms or blogs. 600% in the last 12 months? Yes. What Rubik calls intolerant language is just a nicer way of saying hate speech. And when you look at this graph, it's hard to deny it's been growing with Trump's popularity. There were times that it would dip in Canada, and there were times that it would drastically increase. Certainly, again, in November, it did drastically increase. And then when Trump actually won the nomination, that gave it another huge spike. And then the largest is when he won the election. Oh, yeah. yeah. And the most common words thrown around? Hashtag Zig Heil, hashtag white genocide, hashtag white power. Make okay. America great again. Oh, make America white again. Mm. <laughs> That's something I, they are actually saying. We asked James to analyze his research and build a word cloud. Here's how it works. The bigger the word, the more often the terms have shown up. Ban Muslims is at the top of the pack, and Donald Trump's name is not far behind. The third most common term that they're using in association with those words is at real Donald Trump, his Twitter handle. So as uh, more people discuss Donald Trump, more people will discuss um, racist language in Canada. Within Islamophobia and white nationalism, there have absolutely been a correlation with how many Canadians are tweeting about this and how many Americans are. We're in lockstep. So his research confirms the Trump effect is here, but how will it play out on the street? That's what we're going to test, taking some of the words that are spreading on the internet and putting them into print on t-shirts. Slogans directly linked to white supremacist groups. Three different shirts, three different locations. We begin in Alliston, Ontario, in the heart of MP Kelly Leach's riding. She's been in the news the last few months. Well, not all of President-elect Donald Trump's supporters are here in the United States. His anti-establishment brand has found some common ground with folks north of our border. We should be screening immigrants to Canada for Canadian values. And two-thirds of Canadians, average Canadians, agree with me, the elites, the insiders, yeah. the left-wing media, it is, they're doing everything they can to stop me. It's remarkable <laughs> I'm not how back down. similar the concerns there are to the concerns here. Will the people in Leech's riding buy what Mike's selling? White Pride Worldwide t-shirts. Make Canada great t-shirts, $10. Support Donald Trump's inauguration. We are selling t-shirts. Uh, 
Hey, we got some shirts. They're 10 bucks, bro. We have a few of them. We got the Make Canada Great Again. We have the uh, White Pride Worldwide. Yeah, yeah, come over, come over. We're nearby, watching from our van. Hey, how are you doing, man? Yeah, we have the uh, Make Canada Great Again t-shirts, they're 10 bucks. The White Pride Worldwide t-shirts are the same, and the White Power ones. You know, we gotta stick with our traditional values. We're losing that. Mike's dialogue is based on real conversations documented by Canada's leading hate crime specialist. So that's what we're here for. We're here to support to unite the state. I mean, what we want to do, have everyone come over here, like take over our, our culture, our rights. As soon as the transaction is made, we're jumping out. What's that? We work for? Yeah, exactly. I know. We came here, we came here and built this country, and then they just want to come over here, right? Yeah. I mean, come on. Got two large, so I'm grabbing uh, white worldwide. Okay. And uh, you, you only see a medium in the Canada one, eh? Uh, the mid-Canada one, I, I think I'm gonna check here for large, see what I got. And there you are. Thanks a lot. Take care. What do you think now? How's it going? I'm Asha Tomlinson. I'm with CBC Marketplace. We just want to know why you bought those t-shirts and if you agree with those slogans. Do you agree with white pride worldwide? And why? You got your money to buy the shirts. You wanted the shirts. Why? You have no reason to use anything involving me for anything. But can I ask why you believe in those slogans? Do you not think that's racist rhetoric? Do you think Canada is not great? And why not? Is that how you want to leave it? Nothing. Barbara Perry is the hate crime specialist who helped write Mike's script. We've asked her to review our video. Neither of them would or could really articulate uh, what it was that they were agreeing to by buying the uh, the T-shirt. And you know, when when challenged, when confronted, don't really know how to frame uh, their their anxiety. Her research shows white supremacy ideology is on the rise and many Canadians are in denial. We found that the risk of uh, right-wing extremism, including the violence, had been sadly underestimated and, uh, and, and not recognized. Let's make Canada great again, people. There's too many immigrants coming into this country. We need to preserve the white culture. We're selling these shirts for $10. Yes, would you like to buy one? They're only $10. We're selling white power yes. on a main street of Alliston. <laughs> yes, well, it's a so freedom. Do you, do you not work? Is this what you it's, do for a living? It's freedom. Do you put down other races? It's not putting anyone down. It's just preserving white white culture, the traditional values that Canada has. That well, we are. You shouldn't be talking to me because I'm actually not a traditional Canadian. Uh, so... Well, what kind of Canadian are you? Well, I'm. I'm a Canadian citizen now, but I was born in Italy, so. Oh, I see. Okay, so you're still you're still on the white side, though. This is absolutely outrageous. You're really? very upset yeah. right now. Yes, I'm so upset because I am happy with the newcomers, and I am happy having diversity here. And I just think that we have no, part, we we don't need this in Canada. Hi, right, would you like to buy a Make Canada Great Again T-shirt? They're only ten dollars. Yeah, no, I can't afford it. I'll give you one for five. We have these ones here. Those people, those immigrants that are coming here, are taking over everything. They're stepping up in the States. It's time to step up here. Let's go. Okay, we're rolling. Excuse me. Hi, my name is Asha Tomlinson. I'm with CBC Marketplace. Oh this is a social experiment. Okay. Mike is an actor. We want to know why you decided to buy that T-shirt. Because I agree with him. If you want to come here and support Canada, support Canada. Live our way. You know, if you're not happy with it, then either, you know, keep it to yourself, celebrate on your own or whatever, but don't change, don't change who we are and what we stand for. Thank you for talking with us. Okay, thank you. Okay. In just under an hour, Mike sold four shirts. What happens in Canada's most diverse city? Why did you That's buy the racist. shirt? You might be surprised on your marketplace. This is your marketplace. We will make a 
America great again. It's been a year of divisive politics. In Canada, we're seeing an increase in hate speech and hate crimes. Racist incidents caught on camera. What's your problem? You f Go back to India. White power, m Hey, hey, excuse me. What? You don't have the right to tell people to go back to their country. I have the right to tell you. Please call control. We're on a stakeout to see what it takes for you to stand up against this. White Pride Worldwide t-shirts. Make Canada great t-shirts, $10. Our actor Mike is selling white supremacist t-shirts in Toronto. Let's support the white pride that this country used to be. One of the world's most multicultural cities. White pride. Are you kidding me? The white revolution is the only solution. Let's make Canada gray again. Would you like one? <laughs> it's a free country, and we're trying to spread the word while we still have a free country. I'm not, I'm actually more educated than you think. Hi, my name is Asha Tomlinson. I'm with CBC Marketplace. We're taking the pulse of Canadians to see if they hold racist attitudes. Mike is an actor. I live in a neighborhood where everybody is from a different country. My kids go to a school where in 22 kids out of the class are 17 languages spoken. That's the country I live in, not that. Get your t-shirts here, make Canada great again. Each time we set up, someone intervenes. Sure, ma'am, I would not. We don't live in a country like that. We're not in America. How are you able to justify saying getting rid of immigrants when our own people are immigrants here? Clearly, people here don't like Mike's message. Hi. Hi. We got several calls about uh, what's going on here. There was uh, some uh, pro possibly uh, some hate propaganda. It's upsetting to see. It would be, yes. Yeah. And this is Canada after all, right? We're, we're uh, multicultural and it, there's no place for that, right? But watch what happens when we set up again. I have this one, I have the white power one, oh, no, thanks. and I have the white pride worldwide. Which one would you like? Take out. Okay. Make Canada great again. There you go. Thanks a lot. We gotta go. Why did you it's buy the racist. shirt? Show me what the shirt says. It says make Canada great again. You believe that Canada isn't great right now? Um, I think that Canada has a lot of economic issues and you know, we're making some really bad decisions, and that's my opinion. Is this in relation to what you're seeing in the U.S. with the Trump rhetoric happening there? What rhetoric are you referring to? Well, he has said ban immigrants from coming in, ban that. Muslims, build a wall yeah, in Mexico. I am anti-immigration. I can honestly say that I'm anti-immigration. Why? At this point, I believe that we have to worry more about ourselves. When you say anti-immigration, though, what does that mean exactly to you? Close the border completely. Don't let anyone in. But you have nothing against non-white people. Absolutely not. I love. I have a lot of colored friends, and you know what? They are on board with me. Experts call that kind of comment the friend defense, a way to rationalize personal prejudice. We drive north from Canada's most diverse city to one of the least. What will we find in Barrie, Ontario? Let's celebrate Donald Trump's inauguration. Let's make Canada great again. White pride. Support Trump's inauguration. Yeah, they're $10. 12 minutes into starting this sale on the sidewalk, two sales were made. If different races think they can change our ways that have been going on for hundreds of years now. We have uh, the white power one. Hey, I just 
Why? What's the issue? We're, all we're doing is we're just. I don't care what it's you're racist. doing. Okay. Okay. So what? What's the issue? You need to white power. Oh, Excuse right? me, sir. My name is Asha Tomlinson. I'm with CBC Marketplace. Okay. This is a social experiment. Mike is an actor. I just want to know what made you so upset right there. Okay, pull that cover around. My city and sell this kind of stuff. My grandparents went through the Nazi death camps. They both died under the Hitler regime. And when something like this comes up, it drives me nuts. It drives me nuts. A sobering reminder of why words matter. Wow, that one's really powerful. So he's seen, he knows from his family history what the consequences can be of, you know, sort of allowing this um, to continue, sort of allowing that slippery slope. Hate crime specialist Barbara Perry says whether it's a comment on the street or an intolerant tweet, challenging hate is not easy. We don't like to intervene. We don't like to challenge people and, and uh, you know, engage in conflict. You know, it's complacency and it's also fear of, of engagement, fear of conflict. What about online? Fine line between free speech and hate speech. Online and Facebook, all of these uh, online social media venues uh, have really become flashpoints and the same sorts of exchanges uh, can and need to be taken, taking place there as they do on face to face. What do we do when we're confronted with hate? I could be negative, or I could be inquisitive. Some people make it awkward. You see the power in awkward? It's weird, but it does stuff. Yeah, I know, I love it. This is Marketplace. This is your Marketplace. A show of growing divide in Canada. The Trump effect is emboldening many. and enraging Trump, others Trump, 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 Trump. on our streets and online. Trump, 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 Trump. While more people feel comfortable tweeting offensive things, we're also seeing more people feel comfortable stepping up and saying that they don't accept this. Media analyst James Rubick measures online trends. We saw a rise in anti-racist commentary. It's terms like love Trump's hate or love wins or even the newer make it awkward. Hashtag make it awkward. A movement started by this guy, Jesse Lipscomb. What do you think, Indy? Fourth generation Albertan, father of three, actor. Uh, it's 9 a.m., do you know where your daughter is? And these days, activist. About to make it awkward at Dave and Mary Thompson. Here we go. The overall message is really that you and everyone can be, you know, mini activists in a sense, and it's up to us. Jesse's in Toronto to give advice on how to confront discrimination. Good, good. This will be fun. Yeah. And he starts with a very personal story from his hometown, Edmonton. I was filming this commercial about how wonderful our city is. There's countless things you can do downtown before the big event and afterwards. In between takes, I was walking back and this car pulls up. Car pulls up and screams out of the window. Walk over to the car, open the door, get down on a knee. I got to the level that I talked to my children at because it felt like that needed to happen in this scenario. And I asked the gentleman, why did you say that? Yeah, here's what we said. I we didn't say that. We actually didn't say that. Come on. Get the <laughs> And so now I'm sitting there afterwards, kind of uh, dumbfounded, uh, a little bit hurt for sure. I mean, it's not every day that you're working and then someone pulls up downtown and screams that out of the window. Uh, I could be negative or I could be inquisitive. And I choose inquisitive with a little sprinkle of awkwardness. Yeah, kind of like this. <laughs> Jesse posted the video. It went viral and launched him on a quest to break the silence. Normally, we're like, you know, as it's happening, it's just head down, right? It's not my business, but it's our business. It is our business. People might be thinking, what if I go help this person and I end up putting myself in danger? The first thing that's important, it is safety number one. Always safety first. Jesse knows it's tough to stand up, so he's sharing some awkward comebacks. Hey, uncle, earlier you'd said this joke. Uh, everyone kind of laughed nervously, but... I have never thought that sexism was funny or making fun of women was funny or racism was funny, but 
You keep making these jokes. Maybe you can explain to the table why that was awesome. His campaign is getting political endorsements and gaining traction beyond the hashtag. So an instance of hate. Yesterday, there were some racist posters posted on campus, and we removed them immediately. Turns into a show of solidarity. And we're here to make it awkward. Jesse wants to keep that momentum going. It seems like there's all this racist behavior that's coming up over and over and over. It's like we're pulling the carpet back and seeing all the, the ugliness that actually occurs. But it's almost important to know where we are, where we actually are, so that we can collectively move forward instead of pretending everything's OK. I was in Best Buy, and this, um, this old lady was in line with me. She gave me a look. As soon as she gave me that look, I knew it was like, what's going through her mind was like, what are you doing here? This is not where black people stay. I believe you, wholeheartedly believe you. And I probably would speak up, uh, just me. You know, I, I would say I, was, I, I saw you staring at me. Uh, it looks like maybe you, you have an issue with me. I was wondering, I'm just giving you the opportunity to talk about it right now. It is up to us. No one else is going to do it. Um, I want to make sure that like, people know that they're not alone. So start a branch in the school. Let's do some stuff. What's your name? Michaela. Jesse. Thank you. Let's do some things. That went all right. It went great, actually. It's always good when the kids can open up and tell us stories on how they made it awkward or how they're going to make it awkward in the future. I can't complain. Kids of the future. Peace. The future under a Trump presidency has yet to be written. But one thing is certain, while there's hate, there's also hope. And coming up in half an hour, our colleagues at the Fifth Estate have this story. There are lots of mysterious coincidences involving Donald Trump and things Russian. I never met Putin. I don't know who Putin is. I was in Moscow recently. And I spoke indirectly and directly with President Putin. The Russians had developed compromising intelligence on Donald Trump. Welcome back to Miss Universe 2013, coming at you from Moscow. It happened when he was in Moscow. I read the information. It's all fake news. The Russian Connection, coming up on the Fifth Estate. Mm -hmm.